back with Bethesda, um, back with Bethesda press conference, we're talking about VR games, and now we're talking about Doom VR! I think Doom would be a great game, in fact, I think Elder Scrolls would be a great game. First person open world RPGs. So we have Fallout 4 for you to play as well. Well, that's awesome. Wander the wasteland, check out the iconic Red Rocket Tri Combat. I'm telling you, with a Pip Boy on your arm, a dog by your side, a gun in your hand, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I was getting there. Tonight, we're pleased to announce that Fallout 4 will be released in 2017 oh. on the HTC Vive platform. Wow. That's and awesome. If you thought survival mode was an intense way to experience Fallout, you ain't seen nothing yet. We want to give you a glimpse into where we're headed with VR, where you can expect us to remain a leader, offering our games on the very best platforms you choose. So be sure to check it out. Now, for more on the second half of the showcase, let's check in with Adam and Morgan to see what's happening and get an update on what they have planned. Adam, Morgan, what do you have for us? Thanks, Pete. Now, we are here at BE3+, Plus, and this is sort of this experience that you guys are going to get to see um, after the showcase. We have some Bethesda VR over here. Now, right now, there's no line, so that's kind of tempting, this. isn't it? So, taking advantage of that. Okay, Thank you, Adam and Morgan. We will see that's you guys beautiful. in a few minutes. But we are not going anywhere just yet because there is one more thing that we think you are going to want to see. Last year, we announced that a sequel to Dishonored was in development, marking a new chapter to the Game of the Year from Arcane Studios. We shared a few tidbits about the sequel, but for the most part, you could say we've been in stealth mode. Until now. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Dishonored 2 is going to be a very special game, one that lives up to its celebrated legacy and then goes way beyond. To tell you more, please join me in welcoming the creative director of Dishonored 2, Harvey Smith. Wow. Thanks, Pete. Hi, everybody. In Dishonored, you play a supernatural assassin in a steampunk city. The game blends combat, stealth, and mobility, giving you many different pathways and approaches. When the original Dishonored was released in 2012, you embraced the game and made it your own. You discovered moves and combinations of powers that we didn't even imagine. We were thrilled by your passion for Dishonored, and we were humbled by the success of the game, which won more than 100 Game of the Year awards. At last year's E3, we announced Dishonored 2. So tonight, here with all of you for the first time, we're going to show you the game. I'm finally going to say something, because I know we got the announcement we did. Got it? Sure. Great graphics. Always great graphics with Bethesda. Welcome back to the Empire of the Isles, a rich Victorian inspired fantasy world with a distinct style and an exotic cast of characters. For Dishonored 2, we wanted to explore a new location, Karnaka, the Jewel of the South. Our approach to world creation is very layered. Our art and design teams work together to create a strong sense of place with a well-realized culture. It's based on the people living there, the work they do, the architecture, economy, the climate, even the food and songs. In order to bring Karnaka to life, we've created a custom game engine designed to support our signature art it direction and level design. Fit. Breathtaking. We wanted Dishonored 2 to resemble a painting in motion, so we've given considerable thought to our lighting and the way it plays across every surface. We've created custom tools to support the interruptible real-time narrative scenes necessary for a stealth simulation. And the same is true for our approach to audio, both in terms of atmospherics and stealth gameplay. All of these details make Karnaka more vivid thanks to our new technology, which we call the Void Engine.
existing spaces for you to explore. We've got several creative goals. We want the environment to feel coherent and complete, plausible. Where do these characters live and how do they get to work? Is there a, vi a viable pathway that makes sense? Where do they take their breaks or stop for lunch? But it goes further than that. For Dishonored 2, we felt compelled to ask ourselves about the history of a given street or shop. What was there a decade before the player arrives in Karnaka? Often, you can see the layers of history, watermarks on the wall from past floods, peeling posters and advertisements from years ago. We want every market, every alley to tell a story and offer you the chance to see something novel or intriguing. Dishonor 2 starts and ends in Dunwall, but most of the action takes place here in Karnaka. That water. <laughs> All right, there you go. Your first look at Dishonor 2. Fantastic, looks Thank fantastic. You. On behalf of all my teammates at Arcane and Leon who worked so hard to bring this to you, and my dear friend Rafael Colantonio, thank you so much for all the passion you've given the game. In the first Dishonored game, you played Corvo Atano, falsely accused of killing the Empress, the woman he loved and was sworn to protect, and you were blamed for the abduction of their daughter, Emily Caldwin. After escaping on the night of his execution, Corvo is gifted with supernatural powers and dedicates himself to avenging the death of the Empress and restoring young Emily to the throne. As we began to work on Dishonored 2, a single question haunted us. What became of Emily Caldwin? How would her experiences affect her and what kind of ruler would she become? We envisioned Emily grown up, 25 years of age, and then we begin to imagine what she'd be like as a heroic figure, as someone fighting for like her life we're getting against female the protagonists a bit more. We developed a vision for Emily Caldwin that excited us, and at E3 last year, we shared that vision with the world. Dishonored 2 is set 15 years after the first game. Emily Caldwin rules the Empire, watched over by her father, Corvo Atano. Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. I wish your mother was still the Empress. I don't think I'm very good at this. You're still learning. Don't worry about the rabble rousers, and we'll catch the crown killer eventually. People are saying it's you, but these assassinations are a misguided effort to protect me. No, someone's trying to make us look guilty by targeting your enemies. I wish I could just run away from all this. Sometimes you do. You think I don't know about your nights out on the rooftops? Courage. The ceremony will be over soon. Royal protector and father. I should have passed a law against that combination of titles years ago. When an otherworldly usurper seizes the throne, the fate of the Empire is left hanging in the balance. Dishonored 2 offers you the choice of playing as Empress Emily Caldwin or the royal protector, Corvo Atano. Emily and Corvo are both fully voiced this time with their own perspectives and emotional responses to the events transpiring around them. Whether you choose to play, whoever you choose to play, you've got to flee Dunwall, your home, and travel to Karnaka in order to unravel the threads of a conspiracy and take back what's yours. I'd like to get this a go. That's the captain of that ship. <clears throat> Dishonored is known for unscripted, simulation driven missions where no two players ever have the same experience. <clears throat> There are many pathways to explore as you penetrate well-defended locations, many, uh, numerous ways to find and eliminate nefarious targets. In crafting the missions for Dishonored 2, we've put a much greater emphasis on big, interesting themes, 
either from a gameplay or fictional standpoint, making each mission a wildly unique place to explore. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Today we're going to show you the Dust District, an industrial ruin ravaged by terrible storms that hit at random intervals. Hmm. In the Dust District, a militant religious faction called the Overseers is at war with the Howler Gang. The leaders mm. of both factions are trying to take each other down. This is the last game. I might actually just end this off here. How this works first. Well, I'll just say, it looks like a really good game. I'd like to give it a go. I mean, I'd like to get more into Bethesda-based games. I mean, Elder Scrolls Skyrim is coming. So I'm quite excited about that. Fallout 4 just looks really good. You know, it looks all good now. This mysterious prey game looks Everything interesting. You see here so, is um, in the yeah, I might just end this here. Um, this has been Renish Tunnel, we're watching the Bethesda, um, you know, Beth <laughs> that thing, the press conference, and, um, tomorrow, I'm going to be watching the Sony and Ubisoft, um, not live, of course, and I think Microsoft as well, I'll be seeing, because that's at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning, but I'm not going to watch that, I'm going to watch those during the day, so, next time, a I'll be uh, watching notes. I hope you enjoyed these little videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Dennis Tumblr out.